after two years of longboard surfing, some ugly takeoffs, extra ugly cross steps, I finally figured out the solution to my main struggles and I'm quite excited to tell you about them. Like most aspiring longboarders, the two main areas I struggle with the most are getting the board set up properly for a nose ride and also my overall cross-stepping stability. Now both these areas go hand in hand because without a proper bottom turn and board setup, cross-stepping smoothly is tough. Oh my gosh, I stink. In this video, we're gonna discuss what I've discovered and also what happened when I put both of these methods into practice. Now stick with me because these are two seemingly simple solutions, but require a bit of explanation. Now my progress is not just two years of surfing. I used to be a young, beardless shortboarder. But it's not until the last two years that I've begun longboarding and the process of cross-stepping and nose riding. Switching over to longboarding has reignited the surfing fire in me, hence the creation of this channel. Which brings us to the two key solutions that I figured out this session. The areas of focus are vision and the first step. I'm gonna give you a basic overview of these two key areas, and then when we start analyzing the footage, we'll break it down in just a little bit more detail. When I say vision, I don't just mean looking where you're going. Obviously keeping your eyes off your board and looking at the wave is important, but there's a bit more to it than that. Your eyes are the gateway to becoming a better longboarder. They tell your brain to tell your body what to do. Science. It's not enough to just look, you have to be laser focused. From the moment you start paddling into a wave, you should be planning for what's ahead. As you're bottom turning, you have to look deeply at the section that you're about to start cross-stepping on. This deep focus on upcoming sections is what will perfect your board setup, whether you know it or not. Now the first step is not something I've put too much thought into, and that was a mistake. In my mind, the cross steps were just a pathway to the nose, but that's not really the way to approach it. If we were just to forget about cross stepping and simply take off, get in trim and ride the wave, our boards would stay perfectly still and balanced in trim. When we start introducing cross stepping, that's when things start to go a little bit haywire. The balanced trim we have while simply riding the wave is what we need to strive for throughout the whole cross-stepping process. What does this mean? We must respect the steps, and that respect starts with the first one. Once you take your first step, that front foot is now at least half responsible for keeping the board in trim. In the past, I would have just blown right through that first step and gone into the next one, but during this session, I stayed in that cross-stepped position until the board was balanced. This meant I had to make adjustments while in that cross-stepped position, which is completely foreign to me, but it turns out it's the gateway to becoming a stable cross-stepper. The first wave I caught this session was the one that completely changed how I now approach cross-stepping. After this breakdown, you're gonna know exactly what to work on your next time out, and you gotta try it. The beginning of this first wave was as ugly as it gets. It was so ugly that I had to stop myself and get the board back in balanced trim. After I did that, I didn't want to lose balance again, so I paid extra attention to the next step. The results? A perfectly stable board, even though the steps were a bit clunky. After this wave, I completely changed my original video idea and focused all of my attention on making sure each step kept the board in trim. Occasionally, I'd revert back to my old ways, and that just required a quick brain reset and try again. But the more I kept focusing on each step keeping the board in trim, the smoother the cross-stepping became. I also have a problem getting my second step on the center line. Since my muscle memory has continued this bad habit, I simply tried overcompensating that second step and got it to land on the stringer most waves this session. Now finally, let's break down exactly what should be going through your head on your journey to the nose. If done properly, your bottom turn will stall your speed a little bit, which will naturally get your board traveling higher up the wave, and that's where you wanna be for a nose ride. Directly after the bottom turn, you should shift most of your weight to that front foot. Now that your rail is being engaged with that front foot, when you lift your back foot to start your first cross step, it's gonna have little effect on the board. 
now you take your first step, but you're gonna stay in that cross-stepped position, making any trim adjustments with your newly stepped front foot. Repeat this front foot to weight shift process until you're at the nose. The slower you take this whole process, the faster you're gonna learn. Now, cross-stepping is pointless if you're not close enough to the pocket, you're just gonna nosedive. This can often be solved by using the correct takeoff method, which is why you gotta watch this video next, where you will learn the three most important longboard surfing takeoffs that'll keep you critical. Science, science, science.